What are nanobots? Imagine being trapped under rubble after a natural disaster until a cockroach wriggles in from under a rock. Minutes later, the rubble is removed and you're pulled to safety. Wait a minute, did a cockroach just save your life? Not exactly. While researchers in Japan have actually created cyborg cockroaches to help find survivors trapped under rubble after earthquakes, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about microbots, tiny robots designed to replicate the movements of small creatures like bugs to reach spaces that humans can't, for everything from search and rescue to inspection to even space exploration, which we'll get to at the end. Microbots are most commonly used in the biotech industry to develop diagnostic and targeted therapeutics to monitor and treat disease. But they've been used for environmental monitoring, soil remediation, agricultural research. Not only that, they're about to be used for a ton more stuff as this technology has advanced rapidly over the past few years. In this video, we cover the types of small robots that are available today, the difference between microbots and nanobots, how microbots and nanobots are used in medicine specifically, and the most incredible opportunities that are about to be unlocked with this technology. So everyone knows those giant robot arms used in automotive assembly lines to make cars. But there's a myth about small robots that they're non-industrial, inflexible toys. Actually, many industrial manufacturers use small robots to mass produce and assemble everything from automotive electronic control units, to cell phones, to medical devices, printed circuit boards, and syringes. Bench chop robots are used for knitting, machine tending, parts feeding, tests and inspection tasks, and then can dispense adhesives, polish, tighten screws, or even solder parts on assembly lines. These small robots are typically classified by their reach of 500 millimeters or less with a payload capacity under three kilograms. One bench top unit is only 12 inches tall with a base the size of the palm of your hand and weighs less than five kilograms. Another is the size of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. But then there's Microbot, the miniaturized gripper robot. Microbot is the world's fastest micro robot. It can grasp and move micro objects 720 times per minute with the accuracy of a micrometer. That's a millionth of a meter. These microbots will soon be used to create mini assembly lines for micro factories. They'll assemble microelectronics for smartphones, computers, or even nanotechnology, such as nanosensors to detect toxic chemicals or cancer cells. The ability to produce microtechnology and mass without giant arms could reduce electricity on a massive scale for assembly lines. Now, if you thought Migribot was small, meet Peaky, the smallest remote controlled walking robot ever created. Only half a millimeter wide, Peaky is smaller than a flea. Developed after a Peaky Chub crab, it can bend, crawl, twist, and jump. These microbots are intended to repair small structures or assemble tiny machines but they're nowhere near industrial scale just yet anyway. Powering robots of this size can be a problem. In Peaky's case, no batteries are required, but it uses a shape memory alloy that deforms and reforms as a laser beam hits it to create movement. The same team that created Peaky created millimeter-sized robots inspired by beetles, crickets, and inchworms, as well as a winged microchip. This chip became the world's smallest flying human-made structure at the size of a grain of sand. These tiny, center-carrying solar-powered devices replicate dandelions blown by the wind. While 30 times as heavy as a one milligram dandelion, it can still travel the length of a football field in a moderate breeze, then share data up to 60 meters away. Their wireless sensors can monitor temperature and humidity changes across farms or forests or track air contamination like GHG emissions or airborne disease. Let's back up a second. Many microbot creators use what's called biomimicry to style their microbots, which are classified by components with dimensions smaller than a millimeter and larger than a micrometer, after insects because they're some of the smallest organisms in our world. This jumping bug bot is meant to perform structural evaluations or take water samples where only bugs can reach. This bot mimics the ability of animals to use springtails to right themselves in mid-flight. Small, 
Self-navigating drones are meant to think and move like bees to pollinate flowers. The autonomous robo-bee will explore hazardous environments, perform search and rescue, and, just like its natural inspiration, assist with agriculture. Scientists plan to use this robo-fly to find gas leaks or even harvest energy from radio frequencies. Beyond agriculture, potential applications of insect-inspired bugs include manufacturing, surveillance, and even defense. The Black Hornet Nano Helicopter weighs only 16 grams, is 4 inches long, and is built to sustain storms. Currently priced at 200 k the military uses it for situational awareness and to find potential threats on the battlefield. The US Navy also has the Gecko Robotics Phased Array robotic platform that crawls in 3D spaces to inspect damages in places that sailors can't reach. Both of these could soon be replaced with even smaller robots. Last year, researchers from MIT and Harvard made tiny agile drones that maneuver like actual bugs. The researchers created artificial muscles for aerial robots to hover for 20 seconds. And get this, they weigh less than a fourth of a penny. So how are these things controlled? Recent tests used vibrations to influence how hundreds of thousands of flying microbot collectives could move together, operating like a literal hive mind. For all of these robots to operate autonomously, they'll need some sort of computer vision tools to see. LiDAR, which is used to power some self-driving cars, currently relies on large clunky sensors. This has gotten smaller too though. Here's the smallest, lightest scanning LiDAR available called SF45. Here, the LiDAR is added to a small drone. This will need to be scaled down even further to be used by microbots. Smaller than microbots are nanobots, with parts smaller than a micrometer in the nanometer range. Nanomaterials were developed for drug delivery, electronics, fuel, and solar cells, and could someday be used for space exploration. But again, more on this at the end of the video. Nanotechnology is currently used in soil remediation, where nanomaterials are released directly into the soil. Nanomaterials detect and treat soil pollutants and can stabilize solid waste as well as control soil erosion. More recent developments in nanotech have increased the effectiveness of adsorbent material to provide new, innovative systems to improve environmental remediation. For example, researchers have shown how tiny, self-propelled nanoswimmers could even release the nanomaterials themselves to improve the remediation of the soil or even be used in water filtration. They've already developed nanosystems and nanomaterials that can remove pollutants like heavy metals or even radioactive waste from water. Researchers have also created a proof of concept to use microbots to break down microplastics from drinking water or wastewater. Now, controls to make this nanotech work autonomously will be the most difficult aspect of development. Researchers recently created the world's smallest walking robot, the width of a human hair, they walk autonomously with a circuit on board and no external controls, which is a huge feat. While microscale now, similar techniques will be needed to print at nanoscale to power nanobots. Now let's talk about small bots in medicine. Micro and nanotechnology is most in demand for healthcare applications, and biomimicry is also applied there too. For example, these micro scallops, only a fraction of a millimeter in size, are designed to navigate the human bloodstream, and even the human eye. Scientists have already directed a swarm of microscopic swimming robots to clear out pneumonia microbes from the lungs of mice. An equivalent intravenous antibiotic injection would need to be 3,000 times higher to achieve the same results. This could improve antibiotic penetration to save more lives, as 1 million adults in the US are hospitalized for pneumonia and 50,000 die per year. Worldwide, pneumonia kills 2.5 million people on average. This nanobot, taken as a pill, can inject drugs such as insulin directly into the intestine, where the user doesn't feel the pain of the shot. Microrobotics have also led to the creation of the world's smallest pacemaker. Researchers at Penn Dental have used microbots to treat difficult to reach areas of the root canal for biofilms, drug delivery, or retrieval of diagnostic samples. Shape-shifting microbots have also been used to brush and floss teeth. Robots 10 times smaller than a red blood cell may soon be used to fight cancer controlled by ultrasound waves. And magnets have been used to deliver medicine via nanorods directly to the human spinal cord. Nanobots can also spread targeted antibiotics throughout an entire wound, 
a major improvement compared to typical antibiotics that only kill bacteria where locally administered. This technology could be used to fight bacteria hiding in the knee or other joint implants or to treat kidney stones. Bacteria is the fourth largest cause of death in US hospitals and kills approximately 1.2 million people worldwide per year. So this could be a huge game changer. Other microbots can change shape and harden to mimic bone growth. Microbots have taken the form of everything from magnetic slime to pasta to navigate the human body and retrieve objects once inside. Eventually, these microbots could be assembled into swarms to deliver drugs or unblock arteries. One company, Bionaut Labs, plans clinical trials within two years for its microbots injected into the body that use guided magnets to treat congenital brain malfunctions and tumors. And it's not just humans that microbots could heal. Similar applications could be used to create nanorobots that heal themselves, too. Researchers have made nanobots that self-repair when broken apart, and can even repair circuits when they become damaged, such as those used to power electric car batteries. MIT has even created microbots that self-assemble into larger structures. And if one robot isn't enough to build the structure, it could create copies of itself and split the work. Once applied on the nano level, this could work like the nanobots of science fiction, with amazing and potentially dangerous applications. The next microbot medical frontier will be tiny biohybrid robots that are remote controlled to perform high precision biochemical operations. They'll be no bigger than a biological cell, or even smaller, to travel directly through the circulatory system, which is the ideal delivery route. Biohybrid nanobots could eventually remove blood clots from the brain without surgery, deliver drugs directly to organs, or even assist with fertilization. Nanomedicine is particularly focused on localized therapies to combat cancer, and plenty of progress has been made. Scientists most recently tested magnets to deliver cancer-killing microbots directly to tumors. And nanobots could also enhance CRISPR. Recent funding for CRISPR-based approaches to detect and treat sepsis included hybrid bio-inorganic nanobot applications. There's even a proof-of-concept microbot that could bioprint healthy cells directly inside the human body, where we need them to grow or heal, like to repair a gastric wound. It's believed that biohybrid nanobots could begin to inhabit our bodies as early as 2030, which is just crazy. But the farthest out nanobot applications is space exploration, with plans to add nanosensors and nanorobots to improve the performance of spaceships, spacesuits, and space rovers. Carbon nanotubes can make more lightweight spaceships, or even solar sails. Layers of bio-nanorobots to spacesuits could self-repair damage, seal punctures, or even provide drugs to astronauts during medical emergencies. Nanosensors could search planets like Mars for essential chemicals like water, or monitor trace levels of harmful chemicals as part of a ship's life support system. Scientists could create nanoships, or nanoprobes, to even explore the universe. Here's how the scientist Michio Kaku explains it. These probes would be different from ordinary probes. They would be nanobots. They would have the ability to land on a hostile terrain and create a factory, just like a virus. That's what viruses do. They replicate. One virus can create maybe a thousand copies then a thousand thousand copies, and then a million, billion, trillion, and all of a sudden you have trillions of these things propagating through outer space. NASA already has plans for autonomous nanotechnology swarms, known as ants, and more recently, the SWIM concept was awarded $600,000 in funding. SWIM could potentially replace NASA's Ingenuity helicopter to inform rovers about their environment, arming each robot in the swarm with its own propulsion and communication system. NASA also has announced plans for a Starship project in 2016, but collisions with gas and dust floating in space would be enough to be catastrophic to the craft, so it's still a work in progress. With accelerating exponential advancements in AI, it's conceivable the technology to send these self-replicating nanoprobes into space could be ready by 2050. But I'll let Michio Kaku have the last word on this one. And again, we don't have these nanobots yet, we have to wait until nanotechnology becomes sufficiently developed. But when that happens, perhaps the 100-year starship is not going to look like the Enterprise, perhaps to look like tiny little needles by the billions sent into outer space, and maybe only a handful of them land on a distant moon to create factories. And doesn't that sound familiar? This is the plot line of the movie 2001.